Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Building Community and Online Classes presentation. Our presenter today is Simon Greensmooth, Teaching and Learning Librarian at Oklahoma State University. Research has demonstrated the effectiveness of creating a sense of community in the classroom environments, but this is difficult to do when teaching online. This session will demonstrate successful methods of using simple technologies and teaching practices to create a community of connected, engaged learners in online classes. I'm really interested in this because I teach some online classes and I always need to learn more about this. Um, if you have a question, just throw it into chat, don't throw it, type it into chat. And Simon, if you're ready, take it away. All right, thank you, Lisa, and thank you, everyone. Before we get started, I actually have a request for all of you. Um, please turn your cameras on if you're in a position to do that and uh, mute yourself, and uh, then feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, this session's all about building community and online class, and I think being able to see each other is such an important part of building a community. So we're, we're modeling here the behaviors that we're gonna be talking about. And look, I get it, um, I'm, I'm at home today, and for the all the sessions up to now, I was in the other room, and there was a, a pile of my kids' laundry in the background. So that's one of those things I didn't even think about till later. So I get it. Um, it's not always ideal, but it is, we are who we are and I'm not going to make any apologies. So um, uh, thank you all for turning your cameras on so we can see you. And if you can't, no worries at all. Um, we're going to talk about building community and online classes and quick agenda for you. We're going to talk about community engagement. Uh, we're going to talk about challenges to building community and then uh, what I think you're all probably here for is some solutions, and these are solutions that um, I have developed for me that may or may not work for you, but um, they build on a lot of research and a lot of best practices, and so I want to talk about how I have built community in my online class. I'm a librarian at, Ogl at Oklahoma State, but I'm also a faculty member, and I've been teaching uh, both online and face-to-face -face for years and uh, that's where some of this comes from as well, just my own personal experience. I also encourage all of you to participate if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you just want to know, like, what's that thing behind you on the shelf, write it in the chat. Um, we're, we're all here to, to interact and learn from each other. So please, I encourage comments. There will be a few times when I specifically ask for comments, but just generally speaking, I do encourage comments. Um, let's talk community engagement. We only have about 25 minutes, so we're not going to dwell too long on any one thing. Uh, I've got a lot to cover, but I want you to know that a lot of this is built, a lot of what we're going to talk today uh, builds on work that has been done, even in this very conference. Um, in fact, much of this session aligns with the Community of Inquiry framework that was discussed on April 1st, a week ago, in a session presented by Nancy Gwynn, Kate Brashears, and Marcy Tanner. If you didn't get to see that session, uh, I highly recommend <laughs> going back and watching the recording. This is um, one of their introductory slides that I quick screenshotted because their presentation was so good. So um, I encourage you to go back and watch uh, what they discussed. And it, it really does build on the work that we've done in this conference so far. So community and online classes, community and engagement. There's a lot of research that's been done here. And research is one thing. Uh, the name of the presentation was, I don't recall, <laughs> Jill. Um, it was presented by Nancy. I can look Mitt it up. I'll run out to the lobby and look. Okay, I'll, it's April I'll put 1st. it in the chat. Br Gwen Brashears and Tanner. Um, so there's been a lot of research done on this over the years, and I just want to kind of lay lay a, a foundation, lay some groundwork. Um, Terrell Strayhorn in 2018, and this is just some like there's a lot of a, a lot of research out there, but this is just a couple things. Um, a sense of belonging must be met before college students are able to succeed in academic and social endeavors. And that, that goes for online as well as face-to-face. -face. Students need to feel like they're belonging. This is basic Maslow stuff as well. Um, if we look at Maslow's hierarchy, we need to have those basic needs met. And one of those needs is a sense of belonging. And if our students don't feel like they belong, if they don't feel like they're part of a community, then they're not going to be the best learners that they can be. So we can't just discount that when we teach online. And we have to find ways of building that community if we want our students to learn as best as they can. We also find that students who lack a sense of belonging, they suffer higher levels of mental, mental and physical illness, and they're more likely to drop out. And holy cow, do we see this online? Uh, how many of you teach online? Quick raise hand. How many of you have problems with attrition, students kind of falling off the face of the earth? Yeah, me too. Uh, research says that, and we just know that from our own teaching. Students drop out of online learning environments all the time because, well, for a variety of reasons. Uh, but one of those that we, one thing we can do to help that is give them a sense of community, give them a sense of belonging. 
Um, to those just joining us, I'm going to repeat myself again. So for those of you who've already heard this, um, I apologize. But if you're just not joining us, I would encourage you to turn your camera on so we can all see each other. It doesn't matter what you have in the background. It doesn't matter what you, if you, it's a bad hair day. You know, we are who we are. And uh, it's good to see each other and, and have a sense of, of getting to know each other a little bit. Um, there's also, if we go back even to 2006, almost 20 years ago, um, Peter Shea found uh, the design of online collaborative learning environments is founded on the assumption that culture matters. And this is years ago before Zoom, um, but even in the early stages, research was showing that culture matters. We live and learn in a community for a reason and community le community based living and learning uh, is a reflection to a large degree of our unique genetic makeup as a species. We are a communal species and we can't treat online learning as though it is some separate entity. Um, we have to build community in our online classes. Community online, online learning community models allow participants to actually actively engage one another in ideas. And in their survey that they did, or that, that Peter Shea did, uh, respondents to the survey were more likely to report a stronger sense of learning community when they also imported, reported that their instructors exhibited stronger teacher present behaviors. Basically, what I mean here is if we want our students to feel like they're part of the community, we gotta do our part, y'all. We can't just sit back and set up a discussion board and say, go to town, students. We got to be part of it. We can't. I see this all the time where we set up these learning environments that seem like they're awesome. Students can learn from each other. And then we just sort of step back and we don't really do much from the instructor point of view to build that community throughout the semester. But we have to. And I'm going to show you some ways of doing that. Um, there's challenges to building community, though, as we all know, and I want to talk about that a little bit here. Um, in your experience as an online, whoops, hold on, did I? Oh, yeah, right here. Ah, <laughs> in your experience, either as an online or as an online, as an instructor or student, what are some challenges to building community in online classes? Uh, if you've taught, taught online or taken online classes, what do you see as some challenges to building a sense of community? Answer in the chat, answer out loud if you want. I'm not going to go all Socratic and call on people, but I really encourage you to participate so we can generate some ideas here. Just tell me from your own perspective. Like I tell my students, I'm not looking for the right answer. I'm looking for a thoughtful answer. Um, staying on task, I think, is difficult as a student because you don't have that um, weekly check-in with the uh, with the professor every time. Yeah, Jill, staying on task. I, I hear you right there. Thank you. Sephra said, um, some of the instructors are uncomfortable being on camera. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I know what you mean there. Um, man, a ton of good stuff in the chat. Thank you, everyone. Asynchronous nature makes it difficult to form genuine connections. Yes. Um, participated, isolated, unsupported. Thomas, that sounds exactly like me when I was an online student. Um, uh, just like I'm in it by, alone, and like um, there's uh, there's uh, there's other classmates, but I feel like I'm just treading these waters by myself. Awkwardness, um, connecting students who log in maybe once every week. Um, it's difficult to get students interact inter interact with each other. Lisa, yeah. Wow, <laughs> there's some problems, isn't there? Um, as much as we like to think that technology can solve all these problems, maybe the metaverse will fix it for us, right? Maybe that'll finally crack that nut. Um, Allie, it's submitting things into a void. Holy cow, yes. Allie, I hear you on that one. By the way, thank you for, this is like the most active chat I've seen for this whole <laughs> event. This is awesome. Thank you. Um, lack of nonverbal cues, internet issues. Yes, we're not out of the woods yet. We still have students who just don't have great internet. Um, there's a lot of challenges. And I'm just going to reiterate some of these because I already put on my PowerPoint. Lack of in-person contact. There's a lot. There's no opportunities for natural collision that happen in an office environment. I work uh, in, a, in an environment where... Sometimes I'm by myself and sometimes I'm just colliding with other people in the hallways and stuff. And it's good to have both. Um, interactions feel forced. Yes. Um, uh, when we do have interactions, it can feel like um, we're, we're, it's just artificial and not authentic. 
a lot of students, all my students have what I call <laughs> max out the minimum. They look and see, okay, when do I need to post on a discussion board? All right, I'm going to wait until 11.58 p.m. and write my post. How many people do I need to respond to? Three. Okay, I've done three. I'm good to go. How many of you have that sense where as an online student, you saw your classmates doing that or you've had this happen to your students? Raise your hand or, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, exactly. We're not alone, you guys. <laughs> it's hard to put out, have to put everything in writing sometimes. Yes, it is. Um, I we'll get to that in a second, Ali. I, I've got actually something that might uh, work for you. So, um, one more question: How have your experiences with community building as an instructor or student influenced your own approach to teaching and course design? So. We've all just talked about some of the problems and issues we have. So what have you done about it? Are there things that you have done in terms of course design to address some of these issues with building a sense of community? Maybe you haven't. Maybe you're still trying to figure this out. Maybe that's why you're in this session here. But what have you done, if anything, um, based on your own experiences to solve that a little bit? I'll give you just a second while I take a sip of water here. And if you haven't solved it yet, no worries. I think we're all still trying to figure this out. Sephra said, give students different options of how to post and discussion board. Has that worked out okay for you, Sephra? Okay. It, it depends a lot on the, the who the students are in mm -hmm. my experience. So if students mm -hmm. are really comfortable with technology, mm -hmm. then a lot of times they would they see the benefit and they would much rather just make a quick video of themselves than yep. write out a full thing. But if they're less comfortable with technology, they'll often still opt for the, the writing option, which is okay. But, you know, if they see each other's faces, um, a lot of times that, that does tend to feel like it builds the community a little more. They feel more comfortable with each other. Yep. I, I know exactly what you mean. Um, and then Lisa had a really good answer in the chat as well. Um, I, I need to move on to solutions. So here are some, man, this is like a 20, I feel like I can talk for an hour about this. I, I don't mean to rocket through this hour miles an hour, but um, I, I thank you everyone. <laughs> Ali, Thomas, great answers in the chat. Add multimedia, um, engage with the abilities of the LMS. This is good stuff. Let me share some of my solutions to building community in an online class and see if these resonate with you. There are five things that I have done that consistently help work towards solving this problem. Um, number one, I have my students do a self-introduction, which is a fairly common thing. A lot of people do that. Um, I also do extended group projects. And I'll, I'll tell you about what these mean. This is sort of the broad overview. We do whole class virtual meetings. Um, I rethink discussion boards and, and I have thought about how to make discussion boards a little different, a little more effective for me. And I wanna share with you what I've done and instructor video updates. Uh, so those, that's the broad overview. Let me dive into each one of those. And please, um, if you have questions, comments, share it in the chat. I want to I want to talk about all of this with you. So for introduction, this is really important because it gets the semester started on a really positive note. It helps students get to know each other at the very beginning of the semester. Um, it helps students find shared interests and common backgrounds. So from the first week of class, Students are already starting to make connections like, oh, you're from Tulsa, I'm from Tulsa too. Oh, you like skiing, I like skiing too. So a simple self-introduction lets people uh, start building that sense of community. We see what, he, what we look like. We can start putting names to faces. It can be a PowerPoint or video and post it on discussion board. If you teach online, I highly recommend a self-introduction assignment. It also does a couple other things. It lets everyone start the class with an A which is a great motivation. Uh, it's a big morale booster for students, but it also lets you know who the slackers are. And if you, um, you can uh, get a fairly decent sense by the end of the first week, who the students are that you might have a little trouble with when it comes to turning things in later on. So if you set up a very simple self-introduction assignment, um, like this is just me, my video where I explain my assignment for my students, um, it does all these things, but it also gives you a little indicator about your students and, and who you might need to keep an eye on. Um, uh, and Sephra just said, having discussion questions that feel like discussion questions, not right or wrong, also helps. Sephra, you must have been reading my notes here. 
um, somehow you, you've uh, gotten my files uh, because yes, we're gonna talk about that exactly. I wanna talk about group projects. Um, most of us, when we hear about group projects, we run for the hills because they're not fun at all. And we, we um, uh, have problems with our group members not turning things in. How many of you have ever been in an unproductive group project environment? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much everyone. Um, I'm not saying I have, have solved that entirely, but I found some things that work in an online class to uh, build, to make your project successful and also build on that sense of community. Um, I've started doing semester or half semester long projects. For online students, actually, I do, an, my project is an entire semester long. And it's a series of small deliverables plus a presentation at the end of the class. Three to four students per group, and I require them to meet every week and they have to submit a progress report. And I have an online survey that they fill out with just some basic questions. Um, how did you meet? Was it Zoom, Teams, Discord? Um, what, did you, what did you do this week? Here's some deliverables coming up. Um, how is your progress on those deliverables? What are your goals for next time? Did you accomplish your goals from last time? Um, during the first two or three weeks of class, I have an onboarding time where I let st I, I, students know who they're working with and I, I have them use that first couple weeks of class to find a time that they can all meet for 15 minutes every week. And I have yet to encounter an issue where a group of three to four students can't find 15 minutes to meet during the week at some point. So I make that a requirement. All groups have to meet every week and turn in a progress report. And if sometimes only two members can meet, that's fine. They have to tell me that on the progress report where someone wasn't present, they communicated, we know why, or they didn't communicate. We don't know why, and we're going to need some help on this. But so I take this sense of community for the whole class, and I, almost, I condense it a little bit. I say, look, as a whole class, we're not going to be best friends. But I want you to build a community of learners of just two or three other people or four other people and engage deeply with those people throughout the entire semester. And shifting the idea of community from a whole class community to these small groups has really worked wonders. And I get a lot of good results from it. And I'll show you in a little bit here. Um, it, this builds group cohesion. And it honestly, I'm not kidding here, it creates genuine friendships. And I have students give me feedback like this. This is copied and pasted from student feedback about their experience in my class. I like this group and would work with them again. Everyone was fantastic. Least painful group project ever. Seriously, we, we all worked well together and was able to accomplish everything we needed to do. The case study was cool to learn more about and the other group members made this a fantastic project. This was probably the best experience I've ever had working in a group in my entire college study. <laughs> I make them meet every week. I know, Sephra. <laughs> um, I make them meet every week. They, I don't care if they meet at midnight, but they have to find time to meet every week. And they use the first three weeks of class to find that time to meet. And they, even if there's no deliverable due that week, they still have to meet. Because like um, Ali said, Allie's very habit driven. I make my groups form habits of meeting every week and then they have deliverables to turn in. Um, I also do whole class virtual meetings. I got this idea from another instructor. It's an online asynchronous class, but at the beginning of class, I say, we're gonna meet five times, all of us on Zoom, just like we're doing here. And you need to attend three of these meetings. Here's the date and time for every one of these meetings for the entire semester. There's one in February, one in March, two in April, one in May. Block off three of those on your calendar because you need to be at three of those. And asterisk, by the way, if something comes up, yes, I can work with you. Um, I'm, I'm a pretty flexible guy. But as a group, we build that sense of community on a larger scale as well by meeting as a whole class. We have five meetings and three are mandatory and students can choose any of them. And I have them on different days and different times. They're 40 minutes long and I really stick to that 40 minute time limit. We discuss class topics, we answer questions and yes, webcams are required because we it's that community building. I don't expect all of us to be best friends in the online class, but I do expect my students to feel like they're part of something larger. So in their small group projects, they meet with just a couple people every week and they really form a bond that works throughout, that, that they build on throughout the entire semester. 
But in the large group, we do get a sense of everyone else in class as well. So these whole group meetings, they build on the communal elements from the small groups. We do real-time Q&A, just like we do, we're doing in this meeting right now. It's a casual atmosphere. It's on-the-spot feedback. They're funny. They're lighthearted. Um, but they're also focused and professional. I have an agenda, just like I showed you all at the beginning of this session, and we stick to that agenda. But we keep it casual, and it's a way of building that sense of community. So let's talk discussion boards. I recommend rethinking discussion boards entirely. And this is one slide. I have an entire presentation on these discussion boards. And I'd be happy to talk more uh, separately if you want. Um, I use discussion boards not for discussion at all. I use them as a way of submitting public assignments. Um, so they, they have a deliverable they have to turn in every week and they, they turn it in on discussion board. I give my students what I call a scenario analysis every single week. I give them, it's a project management class I teach, and I give them a fake scenario. And it's based on real life, but I say, here's your scenario for this week. And I record a video of myself sharing the scenario. And I say, how would you solve this scenario? I don't need a wrong, I'm not looking for a right or wrong answer. I'm looking for a thoughtful answer. And they have to record a video. I don't give them the option of recording, of writing text. They must record a video and that makes them uncomfortable, but a couple weeks into it and they settle into a routine and it works great. And forcing them to do a video where they're not responding to other students back and forth, they're just analyzing the prompt. We move the communal element away from discussion board. The community building takes place in their small groups and in our whole class meetings, the community building does not happen on discussion board. That's where they engage with the scenario analysis prompt. They engage with the content. The discussion boards are not for interactive discussion. It reinforces, though, that communal nature of class because everyone does have a video and they can watch their videos if they want. But it's it all leads back to that idea of we're a community here, but the community building doesn't happen in discussion board. It happens in other places where it is better served. I also do video updates every Monday every Thursday, and that's a lot. Thir th those Monday happens really quick. Thursday happens really quick. Um, but I make it a point every single Monday and Thursday to have a video update. Even if there's nothing to say, I check in with my students. I, I talk about class information, upcoming due dates, reminders. Sometimes it's notes, observations from assignments. Sometimes I just talk about the weather or movies. Or right now in my weekly updates, I mentioned how I've been playing a video game called Elden Ring, uh, which I mentioned to Brad in the last session, um, because you know what? That's part of my life. And I just mentioned that to my students. And in a minute and a half, I just connect with them. And I say, look, I'm present in this class. I'm requiring them to be to do things in this class. And I want them to know I hold myself to that standard as well. And I'm active and participating in the class and not just setting up the class and then checking out until the end of the semester. I also, you can record them in advance. If Monday you got stuff going on, that's okay. Record your update on Saturday afternoon and then tell Canvas to schedule it for Monday. I'm gonna show you a, um, a, uh, an example here of one of my video updates. I'll just play a couple seconds of it. This is from March 31st. This is my video update of me in my office. Healthy, as I usually say. And Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday, March 31st. I hope you're all doing well, staying safe and healthy, as I usually say, and finding time to get everything done that you need to for your coursework. The end of the semester is in sight. Tomorrow is the start of April, and April is the last month of the semester. Uh, at home with some people, but others kind of dismiss it entirely. It's a fascinating topic to think about. So just make sure to look ahead on the calendar and plan your schedule accordingly. That does it for today. Thank you so much. Have a great day. We'll see you online. So that's my video update that I did a couple weeks ago. And it's really quick, really simple. It gets the point across. Um, yeah, it's a it's an Apple as it's a Mac SE 30, actually. Yes. Uh, good question, Christina. Most students watch the video updates. And my students, and I have data on Canvas to show that as well. I keep them short, one to two minutes. I use a script where I type out notes to myself and um, it looks like this. This is literally a, a, one of my scripts that I use. And I just type bullet points in Microsoft Word and then um, 
uh, read off that and like scroll down as I record. Um, that is in 25 minutes exactly. It's 225. That's my whole presentation. Wow. Um, please email me if you want to know more about any of this stuff. I could talk about this stuff all day. Um, if my takeaways from this, if you want to build community, you have to be uh, the instigator. You you have to be an active member of your class. You have to do a video update every Monday, every Thursday. That's what I recommend. Um, do do group projects, but small group and make them throughout the semester. Have deliverables constantly every couple of weeks. Give your students something to, to focus on with their group. And it really, it, this can go a long way towards helping build community in an online class. I'm going to stop my share, take another sip of water and uh, stick around for just a second if anyone has any questions on any of this. No question, Simon, but Allie and I will be crashing your office to come play with the Apple IIe. Thank you. <laughs> it, it works. Uh, it's got a 20 megabyte hard drive. It has a parking permit so we can visit. Is it black and white? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Jennifer, Thomas, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. I, I appreciate it. Um, thank you for being here. Um, if you have any questions, like I can talk way more in 25 minutes, but uh, please get in touch with me and um, I'll, I'll just put my email in the chat. This is so great. Thank you. Thank um, you. Glad you enjoyed it. It's a great idea for the discussion board to use it for the, the assignments. That's a great idea. Oh, I, I'll, I could, we can talk, call me, email me. We can talk all day about that. Um, That's I've, great. I've had a lot of success with getting rid of discussions on discussion board and moving the community building elsewhere, but still using discussion board for turning in things. That's great. Well, thank you so much.